High Park Ridge coming to you on this Wednesday afternoon. Hope you're doing well and having a great week. Wanted to take opportunity to let you know that um, in our Next Steps class this past week, we had a great turnout. 23 people were there. And we'll now begin the process of pastoral interviews with all of those people. Really looking forward to, to seeing who God is bringing to our church. Just a great group of people. Uh, and we're excited to, to be a part of what God is doing in their lives and hopeful that they'll be uh, joining us in this adventure of faith at Park Ridge Church. I hope you've been able to, to tune in or, or be present for our series of messages, God's Design for the Church. We're studying 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. And I wanted to share with you um, just a, a little bit of scripture today. It, it'll be coming in the weeks to come. In my introductory message, I, I spoke briefly about this. But in the very last part of 1 Timothy, in the sixth chapter, in the last few verses, verse 20 and 21, O Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you. Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. For by professing it, some have swerved from the faith. Grace be with you. What a strong word from Apostle, the Apostle Paul to say to young Timothy, this budding elder pastor of the church at Ephesus, Hey, Timothy, there's a lot of false narrative out there. There's a lot of information that just doesn't matter. In fact, he refers to it as irreverent babble. Now, that's true within the church. It can be. But it is also certainly true within the culture. And I would say we live in exactly those same kinds of days that, that Paul was warning Timothy about here. And I would just say to, to you all, fellow Christ followers, people who are coming to Park Ridge, friends of the ministry here, beware. Beware about what you take in. Beware about what you believe. Beware about what you're listening to and the direction that you're going. There are just a few things that God calls us to. And, and it all boils around and encircles the idea of faithfulness, faithfulness to the things of God, obeying God, trusting Him with your life in our marriages that we would pursue the things of God in the relationship we have with our spouses, in our parenting that we would pursue the things of God in the direction that God would have us go and in the way we parent, in our business dealings, the same is true, in our interaction with the people in our lives, both those who know Jesus and those who don't know Jesus. God is calling us to faithfulness and to not be distracted or deterred by the junk and the misinformation and the conspiracies and the politics and the struggles and, and the sin and the brokenness of our world. All those things exist and we know that they exist, but God is the rock. God is the foundation upon which we build our lives. So friend, fellow church member, Christian, Guard the deposit entrusted to you. Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. Cling to this book. Cling to the author and the perfecter of your faith, who is Jesus. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. I'll end with this as Paul did. Grace be with you all.